Ikea is one of our favorite places for luxury lookalikes, but let's face it, they have some products that look and feel pretty cheap. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about 15 of those products because we want to be cheap, but we don't want to look cheap. So I'm going to give you all of the details you need about these Ikea products in today's video. Before we get into today's video though, please don't forget to subscribe, like this video, and check me out on Instagram, but let's get into it. Now, Ikea is normally one of our favorite places for mirrors because they make really high quality mirrors and they are super affordable, but they just dropped this gold mirror. I think it is an attempt to kind of look like the Primrose mirror from Anthropology, the Restoration Hardware mirrors, the Our House mirrors, but this mirror is $129 and it is lacking for me. Now, the price tag is great and it's a fairly decent size, but when you touch this mirror, it feels very flimsy and I never want to be in a situation situation where I feel like my mirror is going to break. First of all, a broken mirror is bad luck and we don't need any of that negativity in our lives. And also to break a mirror that's $129, that's still a pretty penny that you are wasting. I have gotten a mirror that looks identical, but honestly better from home goods for the exact same price. And the, the quality, it's really, really, really different. So I would definitely skip out on this mirror. Now, not only does it feel cheap, but it also looks cheap. Online, I think the mirror looks okay, but when you see it in person, it's kind of a grayish gold, but also somehow very yellow. It does, it does not look like it's actual gold. Of course, it's not actual gold. This is Ikea. I, I don't, I'm not expecting them to treat me like royalty, but I wanted them to achieve the look for less, and I just don't think they hit the mark with that. Now, I'm not saying don't buy mirrors from Ikea. You guys know I love Ikea's mirrors. Stick to the Nissadol mirror when we are shopping at Ikea, and the Hovet mirror, and when we feel like we need something a little bit fancier, maybe we'll go to Home Goods or Kirkland's or we'll splurge with one from a designer store because this mirror just is not it. Now, this has to be the first thing I ever purchased from Ikea, and this is this woven basket. And everyone has this basket, and it looks cheap. So first of all, it's $20, and it is not cheap by any means. $20 for a basket is a lot of money. You can get baskets that price at the container store. And if you can get container store quality for the exact same price, why on earth would we buy it? But the problem with this basket is that over time it really yellows. I know because my grandmother has had one of these baskets for 15 years. So I will say they are durable. They do stand the test of time, but they do yellow over time. I will also say since they are made of like a wicker, if you ever snag one of the corners, it comes out and all of that substance actually ends up on your clothing or on your toys or whatever it is you have in the basket. And that's just kind of a miss for me. I also think that these baskets are just very stylistically limited and because they are so rigid they don't have any give so you can't overfill them and you're normally putting these baskets in some type of cubby container and sometimes there is some wiggle room and we want to be able to fit all the things we need to fit into this cubby organizer so I would prefer a basket that gives a little bit of give so instead of this basket I would love to use this basket instead it is also from Ikea it's the exact same size but the coloring of it is so much more sophisticated instead of the yellow in your face kind of farmhouse look that you're getting with that other basket. This one is a little bit more muted. It would work in the modern organic, um, the transitional, the cottage core, and a, an array of different design styles unlike that other one. The only downfall of this basket is that it does have an opening in there. So if you're shoving a lot of junk in there, it will be partially visible. But I think this one looks so much more sophisticated. I have not had that snagging issue and the color really maintains itself. So buy this, not that. Now speaking of cube organizers, I have to do the unthinkable and say that the Calyx organizer doesn't look the most sophisticated. I think that they are perfect additions to any playroom or office, but if you're trying to achieve the Lux look for less, the Calyx is not necessarily what I would urge you to use unless you're doing some type of DIY to really zhuzh it up and make it look like a really seamless bookcase. And let's face it, the Calyx, it used to be around $49 and now it is 100 buckaroos for the eight you know, set calyx, which I mean, most pe people need one that size. So it is really, really, really gone up in price. And I just don't think it looks super sophisticated because of course it has that, you know, very typical Ikea white lacquer on it. It doesn't have any hardware and you can see your mess from literally any angle. So unless you're buying the calyx and then also spending $20 or $18 a piece on eight of those baskets, it isn't actually the most affordable option. And a lot of people end up having a lot of spillover from their calyx into another organization system. 
Now, again, keep using this if you're using this in a playroom, but if you want something a little bit more sophisticated, I'd probably pick up the Billy Morladin combo. So we all know the Billy bookcase, very famous. You see tons of hacks with them, but with the Billy Morladin combo, you do get some closed and open storage. So up top, you can still use some boxes, not the big square ones, but you can still use boxes to hide all of your things. And you have some closed shelving so that you can hide all the things you don't want people to see. And it has some really elevated detail with some white glass and they have some stainless steel hardware. Just those additional elements really up the sophistication level so that you don't look as cheap as the Calyx does look. Now, this is one of those Ikea products where I love the price tag. It's $65, but I hate the outcome. So this is the pillow chair. This chair, I just don't know why they made it. I don't know why they have made this chair. I think it could look really, really sophisticated if they had a really cool upholstery or it was more comfortable, but this chair is just kind of like a floating chair sort of situation. I love the idea behind it, but I just don't think that the execution was there. I think the reason this looks cheap is because everyone knows that it is cheap and everyone has it. Like this is the chair that you kind of pick up for your college dorm if you need a really affordable chair. Now, what I will say is because of the confusion configuration of the legs. If you put too much weight on it, or if you're kind of wobbling about, you can really see that in the chair. And just because the chair has so much give, that does lessen the perceived quality of the chair, right? Just because your nicer chairs, they don't wobble with you, right? We never want our chairs to look like those floaty devices outside of a car dealership, unless, you know, that's your cup of tea. But you're just not getting the luxe look for less with this chair, so I definitely would skip out on this one from Ikea. They have tons of really phenomenal other chairs, um, like their barrel back chairs, um, that look a lot more sophisticated with a fairly similar price tag. Next, we're talking about the Ball Carp Sleeper Sofa. So this sleeper sofa is actually pretty pricey. It's $250, and I'm saying pricey because I'm thinking about the standard Ikea price, or what was the standard Ikea price before inflation. That's important to kind of bring up here because of course the prices have gone up throughout the duration of COVID. But this sleeper sofa, it's giving me very much basic. And I will say that I sat on this and it is horribly uncomfortable. Growing up, my best friends had this sofa and this is where I slept when I spent the night. And I will attribute some of my back pain today to this sofa. But the reason why this doesn't give my stamp of approval is because Walmart actually has a sleeper sofa that looks like this, but is faux leather that has arms on it. So it looks a lot more sophisticated and I bought it for about a hundred bucks in college and it really carried me through. I think this sleeper sofa, one, we're not getting a high level of detail because it's just a basic upholstery. Two, we don't have any arms, so it's not fooling anyone. You're never gonna think, oh, this is a sofa and wow, I can sleep on it. You're like, yeah, this is definitely a futon. This is a futon, <laughs> right? You don't get the illusion that you could use this in a living room. And that's something we wanna do, especially in like a studio apartment or any space. If we just entertain a lot, we want the illusion that it fits into the space. You don't always want to say, oh, like this is for guests. Um, it's ugly, but this is for guests. So I just think the price tag is really high. And there are other sofas from Ikea that I think are just a lot more comfortable and sophisticated looking. You could check out the Kivik sofa. I think that one looks very high end. I believe they do have a sleeper configuration, but it's also so deep that you could sleep on it without the sleeper configuration and it's comfortable baseline. I think a lot of the futons from Ikea they aren't actually comfortable, right? They might be comfortable in bed configuration, but not in sofa configuration. But I think that the Kivik, you know, it's comfortable in itself. And at a lot of other companies, both the sofa and bed configurations are comfortable. So again, we want to be cheap, but not look cheap. So let's pass on this one. The next item that looks cheap is the Lenart drawer unit. But here, this is $20. So I think that it actually looks to be its price, right? For what you're getting, I think the price is very, very, very reasonable because we know storage carts these days can be very, very expensive. Now, just because something is cheap and you know it works for its price tag doesn't mean you should pick it up. So I think that this is a great option if you have a desk that has a backing to it so you can hide this underneath, but this isn't something that would necessarily put on display because it's just like a lot of mesh being exposed. It looks kind of like a closet system, but you're putting it in an office. So I just don't think it elevates even any office, even if your style is very industrial or contemporary and you're used to having exposed grates, I just don't think it hits that nail on the head. Now, if 
if you do want to use it in an industrial way, now is your time to pick up a pan of spray paint. Um, there's nothing wrong with upcycling IKEA products to make them look sophisticated when they are cheap because we love to save our money, right? So this is something I would give a really good spray with some black spray paint to elevate it a little bit. I think that would really, really, really take it to the next level. I might even build some type of surround to go around it just so that it blends in more with the space. You can just get a bunch of plywood. You can honestly get it from the as is section of Ikea and their own stain and really make something that looks high end without having to have all of those exposed grates. Um, I don't actually think you should pass up on this item. I just think you should upcycle this item and be very cognizant of where you place it so that your space can still look luxe even though we're saving a ton of money. Now I know I'm gonna make people really upset with this one, but I'm, I'm ready for the flag I'm gonna get. The next IKEA product that I think looks pretty cheap is the Brimness Bed, and it is $500. I don't know who IKEA thinks they are. Sure, the Brimness Bed does have underbed storage and headboard storage, but still, it's just a bunch of MDF nailed together. I do not understand how they got to the $500 price tag. Now, the problem with this bed is that it's very clear that it's MDF, right? You have that very Ikea characteristic sheen and you really can't get away from it. And because this bed has so much storage, which is a good thing, it looks very bulky and clunky. They have not done a really seamless addition of the storage, so I think it just gets knocked down a few pens, pegs in terms of how it looks. With that being said, I understand that Ikea beds are really appealing because of the access to them, because you can just go pick them up. And Ikea beds all throughout college and my childhood, right? I am not saying that they aren't great, but I think of Ikea beds that does look a lot more sophisticated is the mom bed. So the mom bed is just really nice and sleek. It's typical Scandinavian design, typical modern design, contemporary design. You see beds that look just like this selling for thousands of dollars online. Is that right? No. But this is something you are really getting the looks look for less because it just looks identical to higher quality items and higher price tagged items. It's just a little bit more simple. When things are cleaner, that is the way to get away with saying, oh, that looks really luxurious. Should it be that way? Maybe not, but it is just the fact of the matter. I love the mom bed. Um, of course, when you're adding the slight, slats it ends up being you know 15 or 20 dollars more but it is still way more affordable than the brimness bed and if you're longing for that underbed storage they have tons of different storage containers you can just throw under there that again will still bring you way under the price of that other bed so next we have this globe that is $22. And I see what they were trying to do here. They're like, we're gonna black it out. You know, it's gonna look really luxe and cool. But I'm like, I don't know where I am on the globe now. Am I in North America or am I in Europe? Where am I? I don't appreciate that. So this is this does not look luxurious because it doesn't actually accomplish any goals. It is a piece of very, very impractical home decor. And I think nowadays with the things that we're seeing trending, function and aesthetics go hand in hand. So if something just looks good but it doesn't have any function, why do we have it? And vice versa. This Same thing goes for this set of three owls for $16. If you are an owl enthusiast, I think this is right up your alley. But otherwise, I think it is just an unnecessary piece of home decor. I do appreciate that it does come in a set of three for $16. So I think that is actually a really great price, especially since it's made of cement. I just think that Everyone knows this from Ikea. Am I saying there's anything wrong with Ikea? Absolutely not, I love Ikea. I just don't want everyone to say, oh, this is the Ikea showroom and Kiva brought it home. We just never want our homes to look directly out of any catalog, whether that be luxurious or otherwise. And I'm driving the same point home here, but this four set of birds for $17, it just makes me think of Alfred Hitchcock and like not in a good way. I feel scared. So I there's just no reason to have so many birds in your house again unless you are a bird enthusiast. I would use these if I were making some type of like cool like light fixture like a chandelier or like a mobile. I think they could be cool but as decorative accents I think I'm just kind of like oh I didn't have anything else so I put these birds there. Now this one truly hurts my soul to admit but we're talking about this room divider. I think the price tag is phenomenal. It's 189 dollars for a very sizable room divider. Now the only reason I'm going to say that this is cheap is not because it looks cheap necessarily but because of the way it feels. Because I was in Ikea a few weeks ago and I was begging. I was begging babe for this because I wanted to upcycle it and I touched one of the panels and it felt like one of those um, games you played as a kid where you kind of move the tiles about to try to make a design. It felt like that and not in a good way because I used to get those toys out of my Burger King like Happy Meal. That's McDonald's. Who am I? But you know what I'm 
trying to say. I just think the quality didn't feel there. If I were going to buy this room divider, I actually wouldn't use like the white pieces, like the plastic pieces they use in the panels. I might DIY a panel or something like that. I think the price tag on this is still pretty decent. Um, if you wanted to paint the panels or something like that, I think they could look sophisticated. I just don't think that this room divider looks super high end as is. But it's $189. You never see a room divider that's actually as sturdy as this one for a price tag like this. So I still think you should pick it up. Just know you may need to take it to the next level somehow. Next we have this picture set of three and again there are birds in it. I do not understand the IKEA obsession with birds but that's okay. It's a three set of three pictures for $73. There's no texture on it. There's no dimension here. So therefore it looks cheap. Um, I will also say that if you are going to get art like this, there's nothing wrong with that. You can get it more affordably at Burlington Coat Factory. Yes, a coat factory shares quite an abundance of artwork, or you can get it from at home again, a little bit more affordably. They've not embellished the canvas. There's no texture on the canvas. There's no dimension on the canvas. There's no frame on the canvas. So I think the price tag is pretty high for what you're getting. Next, I'm sorry, but I have to say that this lamp does not look very luxurious. It is $17. And if we were in 1996, this would be the vibe. So this lamp is uplit. So we have a big dome up top and then we have like an arm kind of hanging off. Again, this is just what I had in my room growing up um, and in my college dorm. It just it just only is used by that particular demo, kind of like college students and kids, so it just doesn't look very luxurious because that's, those are the spaces that we see it in. Now, Ikea does make some really great lamps for this price tag. So they actually have this lantern paper lamp that is just a few dollars more. And the reason why this looks a lot more luxurious is because of the trends that we're seeing right now. We're seeing an increased popularity in those paper lanterns, right? So now they're really upping those price tags to $100, $250. But Ikea, they've always had these paper lanterns. So you're getting that looks look for less, but instead of $200, you're paying $20. So definitely go with those lamps as opposed to this one. And I absolutely hate that I'm saying this, but the next item from Ikea that looks cheap is something I never thought I'd say, but it is the Ribba frame. So the Ribba frame, it used to be the frame. I used to love it, but they have changed the way that they've made it and it looks super cheap now and it just falls apart when you hang it. If you're painting weighs more than but not even a painting, your picture weighs more than literally nothing. And of course they kind of changed the glass that they're using. So instead of plexiglass, they're using like a different type of acrylic and they're not using actual glass. So you get a lot of unnecessary sheen and glare on these frames. So they just don't look very luxe. And of course they can get really affordable because they've oh, so many different sizes of ribba, but they just don't do it for me anymore. Whatever artwork you're putting in there, it actually I think kind of lessens the, the quality of the painting because you just can't see it as well. Or over the photo, you just can't see it as well. Okay, you guys, that's it for today's video. Those were 15 Ikea products that look cheap. I know Ikea is cheap, but some of these items were actually very pricey in my opinion. So I kind of told you what you should skip out on on Ikea and I have tons of videos telling you how you can achieve the Lux Look for Less from Ikea. So I'll link all of those up here and I'll link the playlist down in the description box. What do you think? What Ikea products that are super popular are cheap looking? Let me know down in the comments. I want to hear your thoughts. If you liked today's video, please don't forget to subscribe, like this video, check me out on Instagram and until next time, have a beautiful day.